stars clearly form in very dense cold clouds of dust and gas. And that cloud at some point under its own gravity will start shrinking, it will start collapsing. These clouds are actually getting dense enough inside to pull together an entire star from the material of the cloud. So obviously there's a lot of debris, a lot of dust being pulled together. At a certain point, material will become so dense that it will be opaque and radiation will be trapped inside. This is the stage where we call this a protostar, or you know, this is a star to be born. So right now, astronomers are trying to use other wavelengths of light, like radio or infrared heat light, to actually look inside these clouds and see when and how these stars actually begin to form. These inner parts are gonna continue to compress to a point where the temperature at the center uh, is going to reach a very high value of order 10 million degrees Kelvin. And it is at that point that nuclear reactions start and a star is actually born. Like a baby of any species, an infant star has its growth work cut out for it. We're pretty sure that it takes at least several million years to go from just that small contraction inside the cloud to a fully formed solar system. So if you were near the Eagle Nebula looking at one of those bumps, you'd have to wait a long time to actually see it form into a real star. It is shorter for massive stars and longer for low mass stars. For a star like the Sun, uh, the process of star formation takes of order 50 million years or thereabouts. Not only do stars go through various stages of stardom, they have individual lives and careers. Most are average citizens. A few are exceptional. Well over half the stars in this uh, galaxy are smaller, uh, both in radius and mass than the sun. So, and it's also therefore a bit hotter than uh, these cool, uh, smaller, cooler uh, stars. On the other hand, there are other stars that are even more massive and even brighter than the sun. Uh, the, the bright stars Vega and Sirius are, are examples of stars that have, roughly speaking, twice the mass of the sun. So they're much hotter and, and bluer and more luminous. And then you even have uh, red giant and super giant stars that are 50 or 100 or even more uh, times the diameter of our own sun. The more massive a star is, the hotter it burns. So a very massive star might be so hot that it actually burns a kind of white blue color, while our sun is only sort of a warm yellow. And those very bright, very massive stars also live a very, very small amount of time, only a couple million years. And then at the other end of this sequence are the very dim red stars. Now, as it turns out, most stars seem to like to hang out together at least in pairs. Quite a few stars are in pairs of stars called double stars, where you actually have two stars. Uh, they can be orbiting each other very closely or at, at, a, at a wide separation or anything in between. Some stars may form in groups of three, and actually and one gets kicked out and two get left you know, in an orbit around each other. And this is why 50 or 60% of all stars are in binary systems. They are in couples. There are quadruple star systems where as many as four stars are all going around each other. And then our sun, for some reason, was born alone. We don't have a companion star. A brown dwarf is basically a failed star. Namely, what happens is everything started in the same way as with a normal star. The cloud started to collapse, it became hotter and so on. But the mass of this object was not sufficient to actually lead to the ignition of nuclear reactions. The definition of a star is, 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 pretty, um, is pretty clear, and that is a star is something that burns a hydrogen. Even the stars are not forever. Most go simply and quietly into the night. Now at some point, it exhausts the hydrogen. What does it do? Its core starts contracting, because remember, gravity is always there. It turns out that at the same time the envelope is actually expanding, the star becomes what we call a red giant. This envelope becomes so extended and so loosely bound to the star 
And the star at that point is so luminous that it manages to push away the outer parts. That core at that point actually illuminates these outer parts and causes them to fluoresce. And these are the objects that we call planetary nebulae. And that core which remains in the middle, that is the thing that is going to contract and become what we call a white dwarf. So, after a long, stable, and distinguished career, our Sun and others of its type will retire in rather unspectacular fashion. <laughs>